Alicia Keys, this is Dun -dun -dun -dun. I need some music. <laughs> <laughs> need some music for that. People always told me, like, don't you, you know, you should be wearing dresses and be, and it just, like, wasn't really, was never my thing. As long as people are like, I, un I feel you, mm. that to me is the most important thing. I do believe that you can have it all. You can have everything that you want, you know? She's an American singer, songwriter, pianist, actress, record producer, and philanthropist. I keep on falling Throughout her career, she's won 15 Grammy Awards and has sold over 35 million albums worldwide. Billboard magazine named her the top R&B artist of the 2000s. She's Alicia Keys, and here's my take on her top 10 rules for success. Rule number 10 is my personal favorite, and make sure to stick around all the way to the end for some special bonus clips. And as always, if Alicia says something that really resonates with you, please leave it in the comments below and put quotes around it so other people can be inspired as well. Enjoy. So what are the Alicia Keys to success? The Alicia Keys to success. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I need some music. <laughs> I need some music for that. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm learning as I go too. You know, that's the truth. And I think that, um, you know, one of the things I've learned most recently is just really to just really find who you are. Like find who you are and don't be so worried about who everybody else around you is, mm. you know, what, what people tell you you should be like or act mm. like or think like or talk like, like really try to find it out for yourself mm. and figure out what really resonates with you and what you feel, because you know it. Like when you know something's right for you, you feel it. Mm. And so I think a lot of times we talk ourselves out of it and we say, oh, but I don't know, my, my, my friends feel different mm. or my, my boyfriend feels different or my mother says that, you know, and so we don't get a chance to really explore who we are. And so that's one of the things, that's one of my, most recently learned keys to success, just really understanding who you are and embrace it and be it fully. When I sing that song every night, I'm like, wow, like who the Who'd have thought that all of this from that, you know what I mean? And, and you know, people told us that was a bad record to go with. Nobody plays, you know, slow records. It'll never cross over. Nobody's gonna get it. You won't make it, da, da, da. I mean, they told us everything under the sun, but it felt good and it felt special. And when people heard it, they were moved and, you know, all the pieces just fell into place. So uh, it's definitely, you know, my calling card. It's like my my little baby, you know, and I, and I cherish and respect it. I love this song, Girl on Fire. They all mean something and they all came from something, but Girl on Fire is, is definitely ill. It came from this interview that I did. I was reading it and she said something like, she's like a girl on fire. And I was like, uh, I was like, I love that. We were in the studio one day and I was working with Jeff Basker and Salam Remy. And I was like, you know, I've been wanting to write this song called Girl on Fire. I'm like, what does Girl on Fire sound like? Somehow we start kind of tossing around these ideas and thoughts and these different sounds come out and these different things come out. Eventually we came to the chords that are, that are Girl on Fire. And um, I, I guess you'd want me to play the chords. So the chords are like, you know, pretty, you know, So, you know, it's like, she's just a girl and she's on fire. So anyway, that those are the chords, right? So the CP70 is on it too. It's like a different kind of, a little bit twangier type of sound. Hotter than a fantasy. There go the 
go to damn court again. Lonely like a highway. We started going through all these different crazy drums and then there was like these loud, obnoxious, just destructive drums. I was like, yes, a girl on fire is loud and obnoxious and destructive and like free, you know what I mean? So I was like, that's what a girl on fire sounds like. And then we just went into the room. I just had a mic set up like over here and it's just flowing. It's like one of these crazy moments that everything's just flowing, which like sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen. But this moment, everything was just magic. We sat down on the couch, we start writing some lyrics down and I'm like, she's just a girl and she's on fire. Higher than a fantasy, hotter than a fan, lonely like a highway. It's just flowing, boom, boom, boom. Then we go in again and I just sing it again from top to bottom and I don't know what happened, but it was like an explosion of like magic fairy dust that came down and that's basically what happens sometimes with songs but it's very rare. I just remember being in the bathroom <laughs> and I'm singing the song and I'm like uh and it's just going around and around and around and around and around, and around in my head. When I left the bathroom my husband called me and and I was like yo and he was like what's up? I said I think we just came up with something. probably was gonna come up on some occasions because I didn't even get to the chorus yet and I'm asking myself what made me write this song that high so now you have to wait for the chorus because we could have a disaster <laughs> <laughs> even when I was you know just just starting I was different and you know I looked way different and I played the piano and I had to breathe and I was like straight off of the streets in New York <laughs> People always told me like, don't you, you know, you should be wearing dresses and be, and it just like wasn't really, was never my thing. Like my thing, I wanted to be the everyday girl that I was and be able to relate to other women and girls and and be able to just like be who I was. Cause I didn't see myself um, in the music or in the entertainment world or whatever. And so, and so now I feel like I have actually really come back to that place and really recognizing you know, I, I've always been that person. And, you know, as you grow, you try different things and you go different places, but that's where I'm the most comfortable. And that's where I really am able to be truly myself, so. My mother instilled a lot of principles in me just by being her. But, she, but one of the things that she helped instill in me was also just to, um, you know, see things through to the end. You know, don't give up halfway in the middle just cause you tired, you know, see it through. So that's definitely something that helps me get through a lot of things. You know, a lot of people who are creative, they often get kind of shut down by, by their parents or, or things like that, you know, saying it's not a real job or it'll never work. And I'm glad that I was encouraged by her like that. My goal is to always be the realest that I can be and, and bring the best music that I can bring. And, and that's, the, that's the goal. That's the most right. important thing. All the other things are, you know, kind of illusions, I think, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. But for me, like, as long as people can feel it, like you said, as long as people are like, I, un I feel you, mm -hmm. that to me is the most important thing. Everything changed when I went to Egypt just because it was like a turning point in my life. You know, like, you have these points in your life where you really learn something important. And that was a beginning of me, you know, one of my big lessons, which was about, you know, really um, even 
creating the life and the world that you want to live in. Like, you know, you don't have to necessarily do um, live in this life of chaos and, 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 and unhappiness. Like, what, what is it that you, what life do you want to have and what life do you want to live? For myself at that time, that was the question. Because I was learning how to juggle my own personal life and my professional life and like how to be happy inside of it. And so that was a big lesson for me at the time. What's the perfect day? For you? Wow, the perfect day for me. I have, I, this is my perfect day. Do you remember what it was? You said a perfect day would be waking up at three in the afternoon mm. and reading a book. Mm. Still sounds perfect. Back then, and you tell me if I'm right, it did seem to be all about the work. Oh my gosh, you kidding me? I mean, it was totally all about the work. First of all, you know, I grew up with my mother, who was my everything, and a single parent, and she had to work her behind off. And so she also instilled that in me because being a young girl growing up in the city, I mean, you have to be busy or you're gonna get lost. What's one song that still has the ability to move you when you sing it? Every song has the ability to move me when I sing it, which is something I'm very grateful for because the songs that I write, they're very personal and they're very like emotional and I can, I can understand them, you know, I, I can understand them even if the time has passed already, I can understand it. I have to say, I'll probably say Fallen is a song for me. Obviously I've sung it a lot, but there's a magic about that song that is just unbelievable. I keep on falling. And the way that it signifies the beginning of, you know, kind of my career and my life as I know it in this world, it's like, you know, it gives me chills every time. It's just a brand new kind of me. Well, you're certainly bucking the odds. I mean, they always say you can't have it all at the same time. I do believe that you can have it all. You can have everything that you want, you know? If you want it and you want to work for it, you can have it. Don't be mad, it's just a brand new Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because a local fan stopped me in the store and said, hey, Evan, you gotta do a video on Alicia Keys. She's my favorite, so this one is for you, bro. Now, if you guys have a famous entrepreneur that you'd like me to profile next, leave it down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know what did Alicia say that really meant the most to you? What rule had the biggest impact on you and why? Leave it in the comments. I'm gonna join in the discussion. Finally, I want to give a quick shout out to Nancy Johnson. Nancy, thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word. It really, really, really means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. She turned down her scholarship for a demo deal with Columbia Records. Alicia co-wrote and recorded a song which featured in the blockbuster film Men in Black. It was never released as a single and her union with Columbia soon ended. Alicia then met powerful industry mogul Clive Davies who originally signed her to Arista Records and eventually to J Records. Me and my manager Jeff Robinson, we looked at each other like, okay, so what are we going to do? And we believed enough in my stuff to find somebody who also believed in it. So at the time it was Arista where Clive was and so he brought my stuff into Clive and that was the first time he ever heard it and he loved it and so he wanted to meet me and you know that was how our first meeting was set up and when all of that went well, sorry I'm giving you the three second version of it, <laughs> he moved over to Jay, you know, I had the option to go numerous places at that time, but I felt loyalty to somebody who was loyal to me when I needed help the most, and so we went over there with him. I just keep going forward with light, you know, positivity, good energy, you know, and I think that, um, you know, I, you really, I think you have to really protect yourself, you know, and we, you have to be cautious of your choices and stuff like that. But, you know, we're all human beings, you know, we're all human beings and no one's perfect, you know. So I just try to keep forward with light and love and, and that's what I focus on. I just don't focus on the negative. Yeah, but Girl Can't Be Herself, it, I think that's just been something that's been on my mind so much. And that's part of what this album is all about. It's really, it really started from this place of completely 
taken down any walls, taken down any veils, any uh, any reason to kind of not 1000 percent, you know, just speak truthfully to what I was feeling and what I feel like is happening around me mm-hmm. and, and to us. And so, um, and so, you know, girl can't be herself. I feel like there, there's such a feeling for us as women that, you know, there's such a, a standard, there's such like a mm-hmm. high level of scrutiny that mm-hmm. happens to women and to young girls. And it's really, really heavy. It's intense. It is. And it's like very oppressive and it's like mm-hmm. too much, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, from the minute that we're, you know, able to see, we we have this. We're, we're fed this vision of what a what a woman looks like, or what yeah. a woman's supposed to look like, or what a sexy woman is. Or are you beautiful? Mm-hmm. Are you not beautiful? It's like, whoa. So anyway, the deprogramming that has to happen to all of us for many reasons, but especially for us as yeah. women, is pretty intense. So I wanted to write that song just because that was how I was feeling. Yeah. You know? And so later on, when I came back around later, when I was just recognizing that. I felt like I was in a lot of ways just becoming a bit of a, you know, almost like a bit of a slave to always feeling like I had mm. to be made up mm-hmm. in order to go pick up my son from school, mm. go to the grocery store, yeah. go, you know, like down the block to meet my friend. And mm. and it, th- this was my own doing. I mean, right. you know, this is something that I, you know, I felt that I needed to do. But um, I wanted to kind of like. I didn't want to feel like that all the time. I, I, I felt it kind of made me feel crazy. Yeah. So again, you know, I was expressing how I felt in my kind of personal journey. And it definitely is, has never been anything about like starting like a movement. Like, right. Let's all do that. Like, it wasn't about that. <laughs> and it's definitely not about like anyone who does wear makeup is now. Yeah, so no. like, it's not about that. It's definitely like I want women to feel empowered to do what they feel is best for mm-hmm. themselves. Not because your man told you and your daddy told you and your homegirl said, oh, girl, you look like this. Or because your, 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 your boss said if you don't. It's like what feels beautiful to you mm. so that you can just feel yourself. And whatever that is, whatever expression that is, you do that and do that fully and don't hold back and don't let nobody tell you mm-hmm. that you're not beautiful in any way that you want to express it.